um, to the affirmative on the proposition for the U.S. government to adopt uh, infrastructure solely for autonomous cars. Uh, Jacob mentioned that the root of the problems are uh, with drivers and they cause 94% uh, of uh, accidents are caused by human errors. But human errors um, can derive from, you know, distractions such as cell phones, such as, you know, um, not paying attention on the road. Um, and I feel like this problem can be possibly fixed with strict regulations. Uh, such as you know a um, such as punishment for cell phone use, possibly um, increasing the the cost of a ticket. Um, he also mentioned that uh, that because drivers are the biggest problem to uh, in vehicles, that's why we need autonomous cars, and this is why we need an infrastructure. But he didn't mention that. Um, that bad driving skills or proper driving acts can cause accidents, um, and this may persist regardless of autonomous cars. Uh, Lyndon Todd mentioned that self-driving cars may introduce new risks or offsetting behaviors, and this is describes um, this is, this means that it encourages road users to take additional risks while driving or when they feel safer. So this this could possibly mean that. If a driver or a few passengers were on a self-driving vehicle, they could be doing other actions that are distracting themselves from the safety of the road. And just putting complete, complete full trust in a robot might not be the best idea currently in this, um, in this time. Um, there are also overlooked accidents on the road, such as harm from damage and wildlife. Um, according to the Institute, Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, about 200 people are killed every year in vehicle collisions with wildlife. Uh, State Farm reports that drivers in the U.S. collided with 1.25 million deers alone in 2015, uh, causing $4 billion in damage to vehicles and a mess on roads. And again, some accidents are unavoid unavoidable. It's not really just a human driver. Um, Dr. Lin um, stated that a deer might dart out in front of you or that the car in the next lane might suddenly swerve into you. So short of defined physics, a crash is imminent um, and cannot be predicted. Uh, now it's very important to define the term autonomous. Uh, Jacob didn't really say what autonomous means and I feel like this, um, this word is not fully understood and we need a there is a complex execution and coordination of a car that can drive on its own. Uh, by definition, autonomous has five levels according to Janet Fleetwood. Um, uh, these five levels start with level zero, which means no automation. That's where we are at now, where a human driver uh, relies on this car full time for all aspects of driving. Uh, level one is driver assistance, which some cars have, like such as Tesla where the system sometimes assists with a specific task like steering or acceleration, but the human uh, performs all that's um, remaining. There's level two, partial automation, which currently research is going toward this level right now, where the system performs tasks such as steering and human monitors and is otherwise fully responsible for the remainder of the driving tasks. I believe Jacob mentioning um, an infrastructure for autonomous cars should at least hit level three, which many cars have not um, gone to, which is conditional automation. The system manages all driving tasks and monitors the driving environment, and the human intervenes only when the system uh, requires assistance. Um, I don't think we'll ever reach uh, level four or five in terms of full automation where the, um, the system does everything a human driver can do. So current research shows that we're barely leading level two in automation. And most cars right now, such as Google, Mercedes-Benz, uh, Volkswagen, they've only, they're, they're expecting to come out with cars by 2020, but these cars will only use, um, will not have full automation on the road. So I believe that Jacob also mentioned that since testing has begun since 2009, so to date there's only, has actually been nine years of testing, I don't think that is enough research for our U.S. government to invest on infrastructure, on vehicles that have not had enough time on the road, and 
possibly also with a human inside. Um, there has been research showing that autonomous cars have had um, automatic and manual disengagement, and this means that when the when the car, when the system inside the car feels like it's in danger, it will um, warn the driver or in, currently an engineer inside the car that it cannot handle or process the situation that it's in. Um, as of January 3, 2016, um, the DMV Department of Motor Vehicles uh, stated that um, autonomous vehicle trials from Bosch, Delphi, Google, Mercedes-Benz, Nissan, Volkswagen, and Tesla sent in their um, accident and disengagement research, and it showed that system failure was the co uh, common most type of disengagement, which also included hardware and software issues. 56.1 disengagements came from system failure, while 26.57% came from driver-initiated manual um, disengagement. So I believe just by with this information, um, our policy of um, creating an infrastructure for autonomous cars should wait um, for the time being. Thank you.